Okay. Shh. Let's go back. Okay, before Shavuos, we're learning um, the Dinam HaMakab Patish, again, which means the finishing blow. To, uh, or fixing something which is broken, now making it from unusable to usable. Okay? So, um, not only are you not allowed to fix something, but strengthening something that it shouldn't get ruined later is also a form of repair. For instance, uh, when Halacha discusses, if somebody wants to spray a wig, that it should keep the style that it's in. Or hairspray, you know, things like that. So even though you're not fixing the wig now in any way whatsoever, but the bottom line is you're fixing it that it shouldn't ruin later. So that's also part of the Makkah B'Pajah. It's probably rabbinically forbidden. Or the marshal, they say, this is for the women. What happens if a woman has a tear in the stocking and they don't want it to tear more, so they put nail polish on it that it shouldn't uh, spread more. So in all those cases, that's called repairing. Even though it's not broken and you're not fixing anything, but you're making it that it shouldn't... Uh, so anytime you strengthen an article, it's no good. Um, now, temporary repairs, if it's noticeable that it's a temporary repair, then it's not an issue. For instance, uh, we learned already, you can't put a new shoelace into an, even an old shoe. But if you're to put a different colored shoelace in it, which doesn't match, so then obviously it's, notice, it's noticeable that you're not planning to leave it like that. Or, let's say a shoelace tore, and you don't have any other shoelace. So instead of, normally you put, let's say there's six holes, so you put the shoelace through all six holes. But I'm the only put it through the top two holes, just to, you know, just to hold it. So then again, that's not an issue because then it's obvious that you're not repairing it. But things which are normal usage, like we said the other day, it shake down a thermometer after it's you, well, the mercury thermometers, not nowadays. Wouldn't be a problem. Or, for instance, um, if there's a cup, a plastic cup that broke, you know, not broken, but bent in. You know, these plastic cups. So fixing it is not called makeup, but that's not called a repair. I mean, because that's the way it normally happens. If somebody, let's say, has, you know, pinches in the hat and the pinches uh, come out a little bit. So you're allowed to put them, you can't make new pinches on Shabbos. But you can just fix the ones that, uh, you know, either got a little smashed and you unsmash it or whatever. That's not, that's not a problem. But sometimes, if let's say a chair breaks, okay, and you're not allowed to fix it on Shabbos because that's Maka Bepatish, that you're fixing it. So then many times the chair would become muksa, also, because you can't use the chair. If it's not usable, then it becomes muksa. So, uh, okay. Now, Makkah B'Patish applies this malach of repairing or fixing or final blow, whether it's hard material, soft material, garments, cutlery, books, Big items, small items, whether you do it with your hand or with a, a, machine, whatever, a tool, whatever, it doesn't matter. It will all be forbidden. Food? Oh, now we're coming, Mamish, now to food. Is a makkah b'patish by food. So he says like this. Some poskim rule, the makkah b'patish does not apply to food items. Uh, therefore, Labashu, what happens if you have a very salty fish? You a very salty fish. And you want to wash it off to get rid of the salt. Now, basically, the salty with before you wash it is not edible. Now you're making it edible by washing off the salt. So some boss can say uh, it's Maka B'Patish. Um, some people say it biblical doesn't apply. Sages, the Chachamim said, if it only looks like fixing. And I'll give you a few examples of this which are practical. Number one, we discussed this one before in a different din, but are you allowed to table dishes in a mikvah on Shabbos? Let's say you have a mikvah or a show bought a new dish and they need to table and there's a mikvah in the show. So are you allowed to table dishes on Shabbos? What's it dependent on? If you're making the dish usable and when it wasn't before. Now what is this dependent on? So Shonar says this dependent, let's say, 
and the argument in halacha is tabling dishes biblical or is it rabbinic? That means one opinion halacha says it's biblical. The Torah says you have to table dishes. Another opinion says no, it's only rabbinic. So what's relevant to this then? If you hold you have to biblically table a dish, that means you can't use it for food. Now by tabling it, you're making it usable for food. So you're actually making something non-usable, you're making it usable. But if you hold Tfilas Kalim is only a din in the, the Chachamim said, so then you would be allowed to table dish it because biblically you can use this dish. Chachamim said you should table it, but the dish is a dish, it's usable, you're not fixing it. There's a din, the Chachamim said you should table it. So then you would be allowed to, but Al Tarebi Paskins, and that's what most Paskin Paskins, the Tfilis Kalim is Minatero, and therefore you wouldn't be allowed to table dishes on, on Shabbos. But one second, one second. But let's say somebody gets fruits from Eretz Yisrael, and you have to separate Truma and Maise the tithes. Okay. People have to be careful because a lot of times you go to the stores, you get Israeli produce. You can get Jaffa oranges, you can get dates from Israel, figs from Israel, pomegranate. I mean, you can get fruits today from Israel. So if it has a very good hechsher, you know, then it says on it, it will separate truma, mice, and everything. Otherwise, you can't eat it. You have to separate, bachal, during the week you can't, you have to separate, a whole procedure of separating truma and mice from it. So therefore, you couldn't separate truma and mice and Shabbos, because you're not allowed to eat the fruit. And by separating truma and mice, you're making the food edible. That, even though it's food, is still forbidden. Same thing with tabling dishes. Or, or for instance, even uh, we learned uh, the mitzvah of challah. Separating challah. You know, a woman bakes dough. Okay, you have to separate challah. So now, what happens if a woman forgot to separate challah before Shabbos? Now she's Comes Friday night, she has all these beautiful challahs, but she forgot to separate challah. So the dinner is like this. In Eretz Yisrael, you can't eat the challahs. Why? Because in Eretz Yisrael, the din is, you're not allowed to eat the food before you separate challah. You're not allowed to eat the food until you separate the challah. Now, <clears throat> you can't do that because now you're making the unedible food, you're making it edible. But in Chutz Laaretz, you're allowed to. Why? <clears throat> because Chutz Laaretz is not as, the Chal of Chutz Laaretz is not as strict as the Israeli Chala. So therefore, Halacha says, if you didn't separate Chala, you're allowed to eat and leave over a piece at the end to separate Chala from. So you're allowed to eat the Chala and just leave a piece over at the end to separate Chala from. So therefore, it's edible. That's a chilas, a chilas. No, the is supposed to separate before, when you bake it, or before you bake it. But I'm saying, but the Yavid, if a woman forgot to separate challah in America, let's say, up then she's allowed to eat the challah. I mean, every bit of people can eat the challah. They have to leave over a piece at the end and separate challah from that and then uh, make the brach. But that they have to do after Shabbos. What? One second, what? Uh, what if you do the thing with the guy? Will you borrow it from forever? That is allowed to be done now. The Rebbe says, Ed of Shabbos, Bishas Hatchak. But not on Shabbos. But not on Shabbos. Because you're giving a matana, which you can't do on Shabbos anyway. What if, so, yeah, I was thinking, so what about if you're making hefker? Can you make a hefker? You're using it, it, but then you cane it when you use it. He take, uh, but I'm borrowing it. So you no, it who's hefker? You make fine. it hefker. Yeah. So, who's cane it? He, he will. Good. Can't do that. Why not? Because it doesn't work. Can't do that? No. Why is it that if Tzvila is the Rabbanon, then it's okay to do Because we're not totally allowed to use the Kaili. The Kaili is a Kaili. No, the Chachamim said there's an Indian, you have to, to take it out from the tomb of a guy to do Shavi Yid. So it's a rabbinic concept, but it's not that they're making the keli into a keli. What? But doesn't it say when, when the Yidin came back from war and they were instructed how to tow the dishes and some of 
some in water, some in fire. Yeah, but some say that was that time and it was kashering and it was a different story than today. Huh? My, who said? According to many opinions, glass is minatera. According to many opinions, a lot of things are minatera. Okay. So now, the marshal. There are certain things you're allowed to do, and he goes through uh, different um, practical things. For instance, you have a, a new suit, new dress, new shirt. And there's, there's still a pin attached, I mean, a tag attached to it. Yeah. And you don't want to wear it with the tag, obviously. So the then is, you're allowed to cut the tag, providing you don't tear any letters. Can't tear letters on Shabbos. What? Sometimes people wear, uh, they want to show the designer labels that they bought. Right. Yeah. Just, just the tag no, you're allowed to take it off because that's not called fixing it. Or you know, you, like it says, the, the word is, you're only removing the external things from the garment, but you're not fixing the garment. The garment is wearable as is. Or oh, friend, one sec, one sec. Let's say you, buy, you take out a new shirt, and there's pins and, you know, pins or whatever. Laundry tag that's attached also? What? You know, some of these guys, they don't, they, they put on, like, somebody, like it's mom, she got to give a good sweat to get the laundry tag. You're allowed to leave it on. If you want, you can leave it on. It's not, it's bottled to the garment. You can cut it off on Shabbos, providing you don't rip any letters. Yeah, the plastic, just the, yeah. the, the plastic. Yeah. Just the plastic. Yeah. Or if somebody has a new shirt and there's pins or whatever, right. you're allowed to take them off. You mentioned about the shoelaces. Uh, today now, I mean, I know it's a trend, but people now wear two different, based on what you answered, today's day of age would not really apply. If their intent is to do it like that, to leave it like that, then you're talking not allowed to. Right. You're not allowed to do it that way. In other words, if crazy is normal, so by being normal, you're changing the, that's a shinui. Being normal is not normal because everybody's crazy today. That's basically what you're saying. Is there a problem carrying inside of the tag? No, it's bottled to the garment. So what about the second, the second button on a shirt? Some machlaikis and aloha, some post comparison. I'll tell you we could do it. But there's a machlaikis, some say you have to take it off, some say you can leave it. Most people are makel that is bottled to the garment. You can leave it. And those that aren't would say you have to take off the tag. Then you have a shayla. Now the tag or the button? Either one. No, a button is a shayla of korea, tearing. You're unsewing. A button is sewn, right? You can't unsew, meaning korea. So you can't do that. Not because, not because you're fixing the garment, because you now take off a button like that. That, that's the, the... It's not a problem, it's not taking it out, it's all like taking it out, it's out of here because no. it's something which is not needed in your garment. But it's bottled to the garment. I don't know, I remember hearing... It. I know some people say it's not bottled to the garment, you have to take off, but the, 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 the most people are making... What? Huh? Yeah. What? Okay, next. Now, sometimes, you know, when they tailor your garment, they put a chalk mark, and sometimes they forget to erase it. So that you're not allowed to erase on Shabbos. That is also part of Makkah Patish, because that is in the garment itself, and it's like a blemish in the garment. It's not something external to the garment. It's part of the garment, so then you can't do that. Okay, we said reshaping a crushed hat is allowed, but you can't, brush a hat on Shabbos, you can't steam a hat on Shabbos, you know, all those things would be forbidden on Shabbos. Now you have those things called shoe trees. You know, you stick the shoe tree in this, okay. So the law is like this. If the shoe is bent out of shape, then you can't put in the shoe tree on Shabbos because then you're fixing the shape of the shoe. But if the shoe is just, you know, it's the normal shape, you're just putting it in to keep the shape, so then it's not a problem. You're not doing anything. What? I'd rather blow hot air on your hat. Because sometimes it gives it a, a darker color and cleans it. No, you can only blow it to take off lint. You, lint, take off lint. Lint, yeah, but not if there's a dirt spot on the hats. No, 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 a lint is not in the garment. 
Lint is on top of the garment. Like if you have lint, you could go, to go like this, but you, you can't clean it if it got dirty. <laughs> no, you can't use a roll on Shabbos like that. It depends. If it's only lint, yes, but if it's more than that, that it's actual dirt, and many times it's actual dirt, you can't. You can't use a brush in Shabbos. That's, you're cleaning also. You're cleaning. Huh? You're cleaning it. But not on. Yeah, but that's different than a garment. Here you're cleaning. The, you, I'll give you an example. By the way, it's not so simple that you can use a, a broom on carpet on Shabbos. You can use a broom on the floor. You know those. It's late. Those carpet sweepers, the manual carpet sweepers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? okay. Yeah. You're not allowed to use it on the carpet on Shabbos. Why? Because those things don't only pick up the lint, they actually clean the dirt sometimes also. So, it can pick up lint. It pulls the fibers off the water. Can yeah, that's what I'm saying. It actually. It pulls the fiber off. What? Oh. What? Yeah, Rabbi Kavit Kaham. And he's in a rather, not a very friendly environment as well. And then he also, all of a sudden, he has a stain or something, and it's going to be. Degrading the rabbi that those who really love to sin. It's not so simple. In fact, it's very complicated. It's a big problem. Okay.